Hello, my name is Ken Colgan with TheBIMGuys.com and in this video we're going to talk about Navisworks Freedom, how to use the measuring tools. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to jump on over to Navisworks Freedom here and in the previous video we showed, on, showed how to open up this actual project and look at the saved viewpoints on the left and also turning models on and off at the on the right. Now that's all good to get around and look but many times I need to make a measurement. I want to know what the distance is between one object and another. So we'll take a look at that now. I'm going to review some of the tips I mentioned earlier. First of all, if you grab an object in Navisworks. Now, if you don't see the little arrow, come down here and pick on the little arrow tool. Okay, and then pick on an object. That's going to be the center of your pivot and move and shift. And shift middle mouse button will spin it around. I'll roll my middle mouse button in to zoom in. I'll push down the middle mouse button and it will pan left and right. Now you will see red lines here that show up. Those red lines are representing cuts. If an object is physically cut, it shows a red line in here. So that's what the red is on the edge of those elements. That can be turned on and off in the options. Now let's say we want to know the distance between this duct and this duct here. So understanding how to get around a little bit is helpful because see I can spin. Now again, again shift middle mouse button and I'm going to measure now. So we're going to go up to the review tools and you'll see in review tools it says measure. Now on the measured drop down you have lots of options but really the one we're going to use most is point to point. When you choose point to point Revit's going to put a plate on your cursor. You'll see how this plate is moving around. If I roll that pipe you see it rolls over the pipe and it wants to pick a plate. So if I pick the edge of that duct you can see how it's kind of uh, snapping to the face of that plate. I select and then I'm going to come on over to this duct over here. Now I'm on purpose going to go out of square here. You'll see I'm at some funny angle and I'm going to pick. Now you'll notice that it's giving us dimensions and it says in the X direction it's 1.322 meters. Now that's all great and stuff but I don't know the conversion factor in my head that easy so I'm assuming it's about four feet. Yeah, maybe. So how do we adjust the units? Now the unit adjustment is only needs to be done once. Once you set it, Rev, excuse me, Navisworks will remember that's your preferences. So to do that, you're going to drop down the big N. Under the big N, you'll see one that says options. You hit options. And then in here, you'll see it says interface. In the interface area, you'll see display units. Now, you'll just change it. You drop this down. You'll see lots of different options here. You know, you'll do micro inches or you want to do, uh, who knows, whatever you want to choose. I'm going to come in here. And the one I like is using feet, inches, and fractions. So that's going to tell you it's uh, 12 feet, 3 and a half inches. So you choose that. And then I'm going to adjust this because anything over an eighth inch is just that, you know, that's just too thin to worry about. So I'm going to round up to an eighth of an inch and now I hit OK. So notice what it's saying now. It says uh, 4 4. So I'm pretty close there. So that is the distance. Now, the important thing that you want to look at is see I chose X to, to read out. Be the orange one is direct point to point if you're pulling a string. But many times that's not important to us. What's important is the distance between the x-axis from that duct to that duct measuring straight across. So consider that when you're drawing uh, or measuring. Do not use the orange one. Even though it's the biggest one, just ignore it. Now we'll try again. I'm going to try to get under this duct right here. Now this takes a little bit of getting used to about kind of driving in Revit. Uh, excuse me, I keep saying Revit. I teach Revit also. Navisworks. So I select here, and then I'm going to shift middle mouse button. And you'll see that becomes the center of or, uh, origin, a center of rotation. And I'm going to shift it, and I'm going to roll it again. And I keep doing this. I'm not worried about my other location anymore. I'm just worried about the underside of that steel. And then I'll pick it here. Now again, you're going to see it gives us three numbers. Now I'm going to move around a little bit so you can see better what the numbers are. Now you'll see they break apart here. In the Z direction, now if I move around, you can see the Z, you see the blue, and it's showing you that that is where it's measuring. So Z is one foot, three and a half inches. So that duct is one foot, three and a half inches below that piece of steel. So that's a quick way for us to see what's going on there. So measuring in Revit is, excuse me, in Navisworks is not that hard. It's just a matter of picking the points and understanding what the numbers mean. Now, if you don't like that number floating around your screen, hit the clear button. It'll clear it out and it'll go away. So if you're trying to discuss things, you can continue to look at the screen. So let's try that again. I'm going to come over here and let's say I want to know the distance between the bottom of this round duct and this pink duct here. 
So I'm going to zoom in where I can find the points pretty easy, and I find out that I'm kind of a clear spot here. Uh, you'll see those grids in the background. You can turn those off if need be. We'll talk about that later. But that, that's your grid system if you're wondering where you are. Notice if I stand up here, see it says 12E. So that's where I am. I'm in, 12, I'm in the area of 12E. So it's giving you a coordinate system even though you're flying around. So I'm going to go up under it. I'm going to choose to measure again. I pick underneath it. Okay, now notice I'm, I'm not totally underneath it. So if that happens, you can always hit escape and then reset. Now I'm going to buzz around a little bit and try to get a better angle. Pick underneath. And you can see the plate. As the plate rolls almost flat, you're pretty much where you need to be. And I'll pick here again. I'll pick off a little bit. And you'll see we have the markers. You can see the Z is the vertical. So this, this duct here is 5 inches above that uh, of the element. Now sometimes you may want to use that purple. I mean the orange is when you're trying to pick a point to a point. But the orange always seems to be a little squirrely. So I have a tendency to use the X, Y, and Z to figure out what I'm looking for. So this is kind of some good tips to get around when you're working in the model. Now, once you've done that measurement, again, if you want to get rid of it, hit clear. Now, you'll notice that it's still running the measurement tool. If you just want to select something, come back over here, and you'll see we have the little select tool here. You can select it, and now you're back selecting elements, like so. Now, when you select an element, you'll notice that over on the left, it's telling you what that element is. It jumps down all the way to the, the little item, okay? So that is a pipe. And now if you zoom, if you keep rolling up in this area here, you're going to find out what file it came from. So if I keep coming up, keep coming up, and there's a lot of parts in this file, you'll see this is actually coming from uh, the plumbing layer, and then it's coming from the plumbing file. This is waste vent system. So you can see how that's been done there. So that's how we do measurements in this application, and hopefully that helps out.